Ladies and gentlemen, we wish to advise that the following program is classified AO for adults only. Wednesday nights, my kind of people. <laughs> I am flabbergasted. My flabber has never been more gasted. It was in the paper today that uh, River Phoenix, the uh, the actor, brother of uh, Leaf, Twig, Gravel, and Puddle Phoenix. <laughs> Claims, this is true, claims to have lost his, did you read this? Did you read this? Did you read this? Yeah! Bullshitters. Claims to have lost his virginity at the ripe old age of four. Four Ooh. years. That's what I said, four years of age, he lost his virginity. You have no, you'd have no idea at four, would you? I mean, I guess what I did today, Mum, I made a spaceship out of plastic bottles. I played the sand pit, had a nap, lost my virginity. Because <laughs> his mum should never have uh, given him that book. The cat in the hat cracks a fat, frankly. <laughs> I mean, what, what sort of pickup lines does a four year old use? Ah, uh, g'day, gorgeous. <laughs> How about a uh, can lip bowl of Farrax with me tonight? <laughs> Your cot or mine? <laughs> I know I'm only four, but I'm hung like a five year old. <laughs> hey, hey. Baby, I want to get into your nappy. Because I just crapped in mine. <laughs> we have some of the biggest lineups ever in uh, the guest department. Guesting, guesting. Rodney, just bring that right in here, son. The microphone coming in. Can we frame that, Jackie? The microphone being framed. Just bring it right in. There we go. <laughs> Music bureau, friend to some of the biggest names in showbiz today, Ian Molly Meldrum. <laughs> Santuzzi! <laughs> Your New Heaven neighbours, actor, singer, Mark Stevens! <laughs> and Ian Molly Meldrum! And the Chantuzies! Yeah. And Mark Stevens! But right now, yeah. it's time for the very latest news. The Queen of the Newsbeat, and by golly, doesn't she look like something else tonight? Ms. Jennifer Cahoyt! Yeah. How are you, Jen? I'm very well, thanks, Steve, and With you? A million dollars, the Kermit the Frog outfit, and. <laughs> <laughs> This is a true fact. We did a... We did a... Oh, Paul, you're up. <laughs> Paul just went on the keyboard. Paul Grabowski just electrocuted himself. We did a, a publicity shoot today. That's right. And would you care to describe what happened today, Jennifer? Yes, we did a shoot with a koala. And uh, you annoyed it, so it bit me. <laughs> <laughs> Jennifer, yeah, Oh, sure, I annoyed it. Well, how come it bit you on the neck? <laughs> no, no. Jennifer was, um, can we get a close-up of Jennifer's koala oh, injury? nothing there. Heavens it was. Above. It was a fairly major attack. It was, it was... <laughs> you call that a major attack. 
Yeah, and the, and the koala is in a stable condition, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> have, we, have we got any news, Jo? Yes, we have, Steve. Hello, everyone. Tension is still high tonight after the worst day of bushfires in New South Wales in more than 20 years. Two people are dead, one missing, and scores of people have lost their homes. <laughs> The worst began in Sydney's northwest. On the central coast, thick bush burned out of control. Several houses were lost. And to the south, dozens of residents were evacuated around Gymea Bay. Tonight, that is the area of most concern. But the greatest destruction was in the outer northern suburbs of Glenorie and Dural. A woman and her 16-year-old daughter were killed when fire raced through this home at Kenthurst. At least 20 houses were destroyed as the wall of flame moved inexorably on. There was horses at the back, horses on the side and horses in the front and all of a sudden came back and gone. I just can't believe it. The difficult job of keeping the inferno at bay was made even harder by the terrain. And this is the sort of situation we've seen all day winds up to 50 kilometres an hour pushing the flames out of the valley threatening hundreds of homes well i've been in the bushfire organization for at least 30 years and it's the worst i've ever seen it it was totally uncontrollable just a wildfire situation and a big fire in melbourne tonight too an old two-story brick dye works in the inner city suburb of collingwood was ablaze for an hour and a half while 90 firefighters battled the flames. Their main concern was to stop the fire spreading to the buildings which surrounded the factory. The roof collapsed, the building was all but destroyed. A startling discovery about Melbourne's huge chemical fire at Coot Island two months ago. The fire was the result of sabotage. The explosion gripped Melbourne in fear. The environmental nightmare which followed has taken two months to clean up. Only yesterday was it safe enough for a detailed examination. That examination revealed several pipes which police believe were damaged deliberately just minutes before the fire. I'm horrified to think that anyone would uh, adopt a course of action that would place really the whole population of Melbourne in, in grave danger. A special task force has been created to investigate. The fire is now being handled as a major crime. On this boat, the yeas are 52 and the nays are 48. The United States Senate had debated all day. Its committee all week and the world watched. Today, Clarence Thomas won the vote that will give him a lifetime job as judge in the Supreme Court, despite allegations of sexual harassment by his former staff member, Anita Hill. His supporters celebrated. He thanked God and Anita took comfort in actions that she believed to be right. Even looking at it, how hard it was, I would do it again. In Brisbane tonight, the jury deciding the fate of former Premier Sir Jobiocchi Peterson has again retired for the night without reaching a verdict. The jury will begin its third day of deliberation in the morning. Fairfax journalists took to the streets and six emeritus politicians took to the letters page in the same cause today, trying to block even higher concentration of media ownership in Australia. The journalists handed out thousands of leaflets opposing the Kerry Packer bid for Fairfax. Among the retired politicians bursting into print against concentrated ownership and foreign control of our newspapers, two men who were once the most bitter opponents. The media make or bake, break people's reputations, particularly eminent persons uh, such as uh, many politicians are for a space of time. You know, Gough Whitlam and Martin Fraser, they've had some quite strong differences in the past, but on this issue, they are as one. The present Prime Minister thought his blood was worth bottling and he took it with him to the Commonwealth Heads of Government meeting in Zimbabwe. The reason is doubts about the local blood bank in a nation in which one in 13 of the population is HIV positive. Hazel Hawke came face to face with the tragedy at a drop-in centre for AIDS victims in Harare. At the conference itself, her husband came face to face with the Queen and with real politics which forced him to back down on his plan to tie aid to human rights. And what do the Queen and Cher have in common? Dress sense on the bad side of awful. 
The verdict comes from self-appointed fashion guru Richard Blackwell. Today he branded Schur as the world's worst dressed woman. From toes to nose, she is the tacky tattoo terror of the 20th century. The queen could manage only fourth place. God may save the queen. <laughs> but that prehistoric wardrobe is fit for the tower. Well, and Steve, that's our news tonight. Thanks, Jen. How are you holding up under the weight of the koala attack, Jen? I'll be fine. I think I'll make it through the you show. You think so? Yeah. Need a blood transfusion or anything? <laughs> the only newsreader in the world ever to have been attacked by a koala and fronted the same night. Extraordinary. <laughs> I don't think I know of anyone in show business who show business it's got an S on the end who is more passionate about his work than our first guest. He's known as Australia's pop guru, but he's much, much more than that. Would you please welcome Ian Molly Meldrum? <laughs> Molly. Good man. When did, the, when did the hat thing first start? Um, when was the first time you wore a hat? Oh, actually way, way back, but basically I guess for Calm Town, it was with, uh, when uh, we went out on this safari with um, uh, Jermaine Jackson. Yep. And, uh, I, and sort of, I started wearing one then, and then um, a good friend of mine, Lindsay Fox, presented me with a, an Akubra. Uh, no, actually with a Stetson, and I sort of started wearing the Stetson. How many hats would you have had over the years, do you reckon? Oh, many, many. <laughs> Many. Did you, at one stage, didn't your house burn down or you, you suffered a bad fire? Yeah, that was, um, I was in London at the time when that happened and I was right in the middle of interviewing Billy Idol and my manager rang and I said, look, for heaven's sake, I kept saying, can you sit down, are you sitting down? I said, look, I'm in the middle of an interview, ring me back for God's sake, you know? And he kept persisting with it and I said, look, just ring me back. He said, all right, if you want to be like that, I just want to tell you your house is burnt down. <laughs> and I sat down and sort of like, I went to continue the interview with Billy Idol and I must have turned pale or something or other and he said what's wrong with you and I said my house is burnt down um, I'm gonna have to ring back and then later Billy Idol did an interview with me more than I could do an interview with Billy Idol yeah it was pretty horrendous actually what, what did you lose I mean you must have lost a few hats obviously uh, yeah no I lost a, a lot of um, Egyptian stuff uh, but the thing that I actually um, probably bled most over was that I'm a, I'm a great cricket follower and I had a lot of bats that were that. autographed, and uh, they all went, you know, which uh, really was Irreplaceable. Sad. Yeah. And a record uh, collection as well? Yeah, a lot of the record collection, although I've had a few robberies, so a lot of that went through the robberies. You know, <laughs> my insurance company, I have not had any for about three years, please. <laughs> sure. <laughs> hey, you've done some fantastic interviews over the year. Who, who are some of the most memorable ones? Probably the worst ones. I think they're the most memorable.